Hello there. Last week I hit a milestone, which honestly just, it boggles my brain when I think about it because we hit 1 million subscribers here on my channel. I cannot believe this at all, you guys. Like truly, you cannot put words in my mouth to express how thankful I am for each and every one of you who support my channel, who watch my content, who leave a comment, who thumbs it up, interact with me on Instagram, send me an email, whatever it is that you do. Just thank you so much for the constant love and support here on Lone Fox. If you guys did not know, Lone Fox was always my second channel. This was my hobby channel. It's where I uploaded DIYs. It was just really fun for me to post videos over here on DIY and interior design. And it has now turned into my full-time career and I could not be more thankful. This is what I love doing every single day. It is so fun popping onto this channel, reading your guys' comments, seeing your recreations of my DIY projects, seeing how you implement room makeover tips and designs into your own space. It is just such a great space and it's such a positive space. I've seen so many industries across um, social media that just have very a lot of negativity and I feel like here on Lone Fox there is just so much positivity and I love it so much so I truly just want to thank you all so much who have subscribed to my channel if you are not already subscribed hello my name is Drew I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week here on Lone Fox this intro is definitely going to be a little bit longer than normal just because I have a million subscriber giveaway that I want to talk to you guys about I also have a little store promo and then I'm also going to tell you guys about today's video as well because we are going to be sharing with you 100 DIY home decor ideas, which is incredible. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and jump on into the giveaway. I have not done a giveaway here on YouTube in such a long time. I think my last one was when I hit 100,000 subscribers. We are at a million, which is crazy, and that definitely deserves a very, very big giveaway. So let me go ahead and dive on into the rules for that. So in honor of hitting 1 million subscribers, I'm going to be doing two different giveaways. There's going to be a US domestic giveaway, and there's going to be an international giveaway. And the reason for this is because my prize for the US winner is going to be a full room makeover. I am going to be picking one of you guys and you guys can tell me which room in your space you want me to fully transform and I will be purchasing absolutely everything you need. I'll be purchasing furniture, decor, rugs, lighting, paint, anything you need for the space. I'm going to be purchasing it for you. Of course, after a full on design plan has been created, I'm going to be talking with the winner of the giveaway one on one to create their dream space, whether it be their living room, kitchen, bedroom, you can totally choose. Now the kind of sad part about this is that I'm not going to be able to be there with the winner of this giveaway. However, they are going to be given everything they needed, all the tools, all the supplies, and absolutely everything they need to conquer the space makeover, which I think will be really fun. I'm going to guide them through the process as well. So if you are the winner of this giveaway, you are going to be getting a full room redesigned by me. I'm honestly extremely, extremely grateful of all of the support and love that you guys have given me. So I want to give back to one of you guys a full on room makeover, the whole Lone Fox experience. So that's going to be the prize for anyone that lives in the US. And the reason that I'm separating it from international is just because I have no idea how shipping furniture internationally works or the cost of it or where I should be ordering from. So I figured for my international subbies, I would go ahead and just give you guys some really great money that you can do your own spaces with. So I'm going to go ahead and give away two $500, not gift cards, but just like literal cash. So I could send it to you on PayPal, on Venmo, wherever it is, I'm going to be sending you guys $500. There are going to be two two winners that receive $500 and then there's going to be five more winners that receive $100 a piece. So seven winners for the international giveaway. Now how to enter, it is so super simple. All you have to do is be a subscriber of my channel. So make sure that you click that red subscribe button on my channel. Also click the bell icon next to the subscribe button. So if you're already subscribed, but you don't have that bell icon clicked, make sure to click the bell icon. That way you are notified when I upload a brand new videos. And then what you're going to want to do from there is actually click the link in the top of my description box. There's going to be a link for US domestic um, giveaway and there's also going to be a link for international giveaway. Basically this is just going to take you to a sub page over on Rafflecopter which is a website I use to kind of host my giveaways and it just allows you to enter your email and that's how you can enter. It just makes it so much easier for myself to keep track of everything. It also gives you guys a couple of additional ways to enter as well and it's just a really great service that I use and you are not going to get your email bombarded or anything like that. It just makes it easier for me to go ahead and select winners in the end rather than having to kind of randomly scroll through comments. I feel like this just makes it really fair for everybody. And I'm also going to have all of the additional details and rules in the description box below, such as the end date of this giveaway. And of course it is open 100% international based off of where you are. You're just going to click the link in the description box um, and enter the giveaway. And one last little goodie for you guys here on my channel. This is only for you that are watching right now. You can get 15% off of my home decor website, which is lonefox.com. I have such cute home decor over there. There are throw blankets. We have pillow covers and there's really anything that you need to decorate your home. There's
There's kitchen goods, there's lifestyle products. I have a whole line of merch over there. You can get 15% off your order using code million at checkout. So that's only for you guys here on YouTube. So make sure to take advantage of that. Also orders over $75 in the US do ship for free, which is great. So you can get 15% off on top of that. I will leave the link to Lone Fox in the description box below for you guys. But I guess we should just go ahead and dive on into my 100 DIY projects. Now I know not all of you are going to sit through all 100 of these, but I do hope that if you kind of bounce around throughout this, it gives you a couple of creative ideas and maybe sparks creativity for you. That is the reason I wanted to create this video is if you ever feel like you just need a little bit of a creative boost, come back to this video, click around. There's going to be a lot of content throughout here. So you're always going to be able to find something. And I'm sure there's quite a bit of content you have missed from my channel that is put into this video that I think you guys are going to love. So this is editing Drew popping in super quickly. I forgot to also mention that if you guys want the full tutorials on any of these projects, since they are cut down a little bit, just to make it not be extremely long, I'm going to link a blog post below that has all 100 projects listed out and it has links to the videos and the timestamps exactly where you could find these projects. So go ahead. If you want to find any of these projects and you want the full tutorial on them, click the link to my blog post below and you'll be able to find a link to all 100 projects. Enjoy today's video and thank you so much for 1 million subscribers, but let's go ahead and roll the DIYs. Diving on into our first project, we are going to be making this flower stamped pillow, which I created back in 2018, but it's still such an incredible DIY project. I went ahead and I started off by taking some baby breath flowers and just pressing them between two pieces of paper and added a couple of books on top. And after a few hours, you're going to have these nice pressed flowers. And we're going to essentially be using these as stamps for our DIY. So next, what I did was use a little bit of black fabric paint and I stippled it on with a stippling brush, used a little spray bottle to spritz some water on there to almost turn it into a watercolor and then I stamped it on the edge of my pillow as shown here using a paper towel on top just to absorb any of that extra water. So as you can see, as you stamp it down, it creates this nice kind of watercolor stamped effect. And I created this all the way around the entire exterior of the pillow, making sure to kind of create a circular shape as I went with it, because in the end, I wanted to go back with a paintbrush and some watered down paints to add an initial. This is actually based off of a pillow I saw on Anthropology that had an initial on it, and I thought it was super cute, so I wanted to create my own, and that's how this one turned out. This next project is actually my first ever Ikea hack I uploaded to this channel, and I love it to this date. So I basically ended up using all three of these products here. I used the Frocta straps. I also went ahead and used the Alceda braided floor cushion, and also this little uh, stool as well. And the process of creating this is actually super simple. So I just went ahead, I flipped the floor cushion upside down and flipped the stool upside down as well. As you can see, I got this from the as is section from Ikea. And all you have to do, since I'm using those Frocta straps here, is go ahead and just mount the stool to the base of the floor cushion. Now the underside of the floor cushion has a nice kind of metal wiring. This allows you to intertwine your strap throughout and just strap it however tight you would like. And I also love how this project is totally reversible too. So let's say in the future, you don't want to use this as a side table anymore. You could simply undo the strap and you still have all of your components that you originally started out with. And that finishes off this table. Here we have one of my first ever macrame project I created on this channel. And this is kind of like a faux macrame because you get the look of macrame without actually having to put in all the work needed. So I actually started off with this metal pot here. I believe I got this at Joanne Fabric and some macrame cord also from Joanne's. So what I wanted to do is first start off by creating a ring that would kind of go along the top rim of the pot. And we're going to be creating our macrame based off this ring here. So cutting a couple of yards of macrame cording, you're going to need two strands per section, fold them in half, and you're going to create a large head knot over that ring that you initially created to hold your pot and you're going to want to apply these at four different points on your ring there so as you can see we have four different sections applied and now you're going to want to start the macrame process so grab two strands and place them in the center and you're going to use your right strand go over the top of your two center strands your left strand is going to go over the top of your right's tail underneath and up through the loop this is going to be a very very repetitive process but this is why i kind of call it a faux macrame because there's no need to really connect different strands and get kind of confused as you're going on with the process. You're only going to be working on each four of these sections at a time, and you're going to be creating a sequence of square knots, which is going to end up looking something like this. And once you reach your desired length, go ahead and tie all four strands in a knot there and cut two of the strands off that are not necessary anymore. So you only have two hanging from the end of the knot there. And then once you finish it off, just go ahead and tie all your strands together at the top and hang wherever you desire. Thank you. 
I'm a huge fan of taking Polaroid photos, but I never really know how to display them. So I figured we can create this really fun interchangeable Polaroid display. So I went ahead and used this wood sign and a couple of these bags here to create this. So the wood sign is from Michael's Craft Store. I went ahead and painted it white to start, but you could stain this, you could paint it black, however you want to go along with it. And then at the top, I went ahead and screwed in one of these little hooks here, which are traditionally used for picture hanging or hanging plants from your ceiling. And then I went ahead and grabbed my three by four inch bags, punched a hole in the top there, and you can slide your Polaroids inside, which really allows you to interchange them and kind of display them as you would like to. You can also add a ton of bags to this. You can have like 10 to 15 bags hanging from the hook that have lots of different Polaroids on them. So you can kind of flip through them and see all of your memories in one location. Next up, we have a fun dollar store project. This is wicker lantern lights. And all I did for this project was get some of these little wicker balls from the dollar store. And I went ahead and I spray painted them first with a brass spray paint. Now you could spray paint this however you'd like to, but I thought the brass would be nice because it kind of would make them look like metalized objects on top of your light strand in the end. So I went ahead and sprayed these with a brass spray paint. And once I was finished with that, I went ahead and grabbed my fairy light strand. Now the best way to put this through these wicker balls is honestly to look for larger holes in the wicker that way you can kind of string it through like a needle and thread so I went ahead and I strung through my light strand and I made sure that a light was positioned right in the center of each wicker ball and once the light was in position I went ahead and added a little bit of hot glue onto either side to hold it into place and that finishes off your little fairy light strand <laughs> I have created so many throw blankets over the years, but this was an Ikea hack that I really, really love. It's so simple and easy to transform any blanket. So I went ahead and started off with a simple knitted blanket from Ikea, and I also got some chunky yarn and a large yarn needle as well. This just makes the process so much easier. So I went ahead and just strung my yarn through the yarn needle, and literally all you have to do for this project is create a nice chunky stitch along the edge just to add a little bit more detail to a basic blanket. So I went around, stitched the edge as shown here, and once you reach the corner you're just going to want to make sure to also apply a stitch into each corner kind of pivot it 90 degrees and work in your new direction now you can totally customize this and make your stitches as long or as short as you would like to i feel like i made mine probably about an inch to an inch and a half each but i really love the kind of ununiform look of the stitches i feel like it adds a nice handmade quality to the piece and once you reach the end you can snip it off and enjoy your throw blanket Here is a wall art project that is again totally customizable and extremely simple. So if you need something quick and easy, this one is for you. I started off with a couple of metal rings. Now you just want two varying sizes for this project and I gave them a nice coat of black spray paint. But again, this is totally customizable so you can spray it whatever color or metal finish you want to. Now I went ahead and I did a little lark's head knot of the gray yarn at the top there and just tied a little loop. This is going to be the top of our wall hanging where we are going to be hanging it on the nail. And the next step is going to be very, very simple. Just cutting a couple pieces of your yarn to about a yard in length, folding it in half, and just looping it on at the larger of the two rings. This is a very, very repetitive process of just looping the yarn onto each of the rings, letting it kind of cascade and waterfall over the top of each other to create a little layered wall hanging. So once you reach the end, I just created a blunt cut with those pieces. I feel like it gives it a little bit of a cleaner look. And on the ring that is smaller, I'm going to be applying this gray yarn to it. So doing the same exact methodology, just cutting it at the bottom to create a nice blunt cut, looping them on, layering it up, and that finishes off this wall hanging. I remember this copper and concrete jewelry stand being a huge hit on my channel, so I'm really excited to kind of be reliving it right now. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and get a couple of copper pipe pieces along with some concrete and a mold that you're going to be using for your concrete. So I just used some simple concrete mix. You guys all know that I basically suggest the pre-sifted one that comes in the 10 pound bucket. Back then though, when I was creating this project, I did not know about that. So now I do, I highly suggest that one. I went ahead and mixed up some concrete, poured it in the bottom of an oatmeal container, and then went ahead and placed one of my probably about eight inch tall copper pipes on the inside there. You're gonna wanna go ahead and let that dry fully overnight so you have a nice base for your jewelry stand. The great thing about concrete is it's pretty heavy so it's going to weight it down and allow you to apply really whatever you want to the stand. So I'm going to go ahead and just use E6000 to kind of conjoin the copper pipes together but I went ahead and kind of placed this little T-shaped joint right there and then I also added some E6000 on the inside to place in one of my copper pipes as well which is 
going to be the crossbar. Just let this cure for a couple of hours to the next day and that finishes off your jewelry stand. Bringing back another dollar store DIY for you guys. This was from a dorm video that I did and the total cost of this project was $3.50. I used this cutting board on the left side, which I got at the 99 cent store, some nails, some string and a pencil. So the first thing I did was actually just kind of trace out or sketch out a crescent moon shape. And then I went ahead and just dotted wherever I wanted the nails to be. I also added a couple of nail holes on the bottom, as you can see there, just to go ahead and allow myself to hang a couple pieces of jewelry off this or whatever I wanted to add to it. Now, I used really, really tiny half inch nails, which required me to go ahead and use a plier to hold it into place and then a hammer to securely press it into the wood there. And once you go ahead and hammer in all of your nails, I just went back with this black cotton cording, which I just kind of very, no rhyme or reason, applied it around the entire moon shape just to fill it in. I also went around the edge to give it kind of a nice clean finish, as you can see here, looping it around every single nail. This is just going to kind of finish it off and give the piece an outline. I just like the way that this looks a little bit more than when it is unfinished and that really finishes off your jewelry hanger. Moving on to our next project, I called this one floral globe decor. Not sure why, because it is more so a fun paperweight or just a cute little shelf decor piece, but I went ahead and I used some resin for this project, a mold, and also some faux florals. So the first thing that I did was I actually sprayed my resin release spray into my mold, and then I pulled off a couple of these yellow roses here. I think I got these at Michael's or Joann's, but you can also get them from the dollar store for sure. So I pulled off a couple of those along with the leaves, and then you're gonna want it to mix up your resin. So the resin is super simple. It is equal equal parts of the resin and equal parts of the hardener. Just make sure to stir each one individually for about two minutes each and then mix them together and stir for about two minutes as well. So as you can see here, I'm just mixing it up, making sure it's nice and incorporated. And then you're gonna go ahead and mix them together. So just pour one of the cups into the other one. The resin is now going to start its process of chemical reaction, I guess you could say, and you're going to pour that into your mold there. I then placed in my flowers. You could do flowers. You could do glitter, whatever you have that is small that would kind of fit inside of this resin mold would be perfect for this project. I just opted for the flowers there. I whipped up another batch of resin, poured it over the top to ensure that everything was fully covered. And then you're gonna let this sit for probably about 24 to 48 hours. And that finishes off your little paperweight. I remember this piece of decor like it was yesterday. This I had in my room for so many years and I loved it so much. It's a little Hello framed decor piece and all I used for this project was some yarn, a little frame, some fabric glue, and some canvas. So I first started off by taking my frame here and I glued it down to my duck canvas. Now this frame was I believe from Michaels at the time in their little like finished home decor section, but I got it on sale. I thought it was really cute. So I filled it with the canvas, tacked it down with a little bit of fabric glue or you can use hot glue and just cut away all all that excess once you feel like it is nice and adhered on there and next what we're gonna go ahead and do is use a pencil to kind of map out the word that we're going to do I just wanted to do the word hello because I have an obsession with writing that word I don't know why I just absolutely love writing out the word hello so I opted for this mustard yellow yarn because yellow is one of my favorite colors and I used a little bit of hot glue to adhere down the yarn in the loopy cursive font that I chose which was my own handwriting I was I don't know where I was going with that but I went ahead and I glued it down in this nice little cursive font and I just love the way it turned out it just made me happy every single day I looked at this piece and you can again totally customize this to have whatever word you want on the inside it turned out really cute Here we have another Ikea hack for you guys. This was again, one of my first ever Ikea hacks on this channel. And I went ahead and I got three of these scarf hangers here. And the thing I loved about these scarf hangers is that they actually had like this crocheted edging on them, which I think added so much detail. And I know that Ikea currently does sell these as well. But what I wanted to start off by doing was actually cutting off the little top hanger portion. And every single piece on this is just stitched together with a little bit of thread. So it's very easy to snip that thread and kind of detach the rings if you need to. But I wanted 
to go ahead and detach the hanging portion and then reattach with a little bit of thread all of the rings together. So I went ahead and I attached three sections of this scarf hanger together with a little bit of thread, just doing a couple of stitches between each of them. And you're going to be repeating this process until you have all of your scarf hangers connected. This is so super simple and easy. Just kind of catch the thread, tie it in a good knot, and that really finishes off the process. You can go ahead and hang this on the wall and decorate with some cute little clothespins or little hooks if you have them. I just use this as a cute little inspo board at the time and I love the way that it ended up turning out. Here we have another super simple macrame project. This is definitely a beginning macrame piece if you're just kind of getting introduced to it or you want to create a super quick and easy wall hanging. So the supplies that you're going to need is just some yarn, a pair of scissors, and a wooden dowel. So I went ahead and I cut my yarn to about six foot lengths of each strand. And for the start of this project, on the very left side, as you can see here, I went ahead and I actually looped two pieces of yarn on the start. And then every single section after that, I just did one piece of yarn folded in half and then looped onto our wooden dowel. So so moving on from there, you're going to be creating again more square knots. This project only requires square knots, so it is very, very simple. A square knot is left over right and then right over left, and you're going to be doing this all the way down with the neighboring strands. So you're going to be grabbing a strand from one side, the strand from the neighboring one, and tying them together, and it's going to cascade downwards into a triangle shape until you reach the very end. So I went ahead and it's repeated the process all the way down. You can actually go in and swap colors if you'd like to. And I also think it would be fun to go in with macrame cording instead of yarn to use the macrame cord as the base of the project. And then once I was done, I went ahead and I hung it on the wall and I used a pair of scissors to just trim away the excess yarn into an arrow shape. I feel like this really gives this piece a little bit more shape and overall a little bit more interest. Back to the dollar store projects, this was what I called a memory mobile, and I created this for $2.50. Now, that silver thing looks a little odd, and that is because it is a let's party grilling walk. I don't know why I opted for this, but I found it, and I was like, let's go ahead and create something with this item here. So I went ahead and I cut off two sides of the grilling walk, and then we're going to be moving on to our wooden clothespins. So these are some small wooden clothespins that I'm going to be using some black cording to tie a double knot right through the center section of the clothespin and cut away any of the excess strands and then also make sure to leave probably about 12 to 20 inches of leftover string that way you have a variance that you can kind of use as you're attaching them to your grilling walk so here comes the fun part we're going to be sticking our strands up through the holes that are in the walk there and I'm going to go ahead and glue them down and then cut off any excess tails so we basically have a ton of these clothespins that are going to be hanging from that um, metal section there. I think it probably would have been a little bit cuter if I was to maybe spray paint this black or spray paint it brass, but I went ahead and I tied a strand at the top there, which is going to be our hanger. You can clip all of your memories or mementos here, and it just creates a fun little mobile. Here we have a super affordable take on a mixed metal wall hanging. So this is a moon phase wall garland. And what I used for this was some chipboard, some spray paint, some chain, some wire cutters. And that was pretty much all for the project. So I started off by spraying my chipboard or my thick kind of heavyweight cardstock with some copper spray paint. And then I went ahead and I cut apart a lot of these pieces of silver chain. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and use copper chain as well. But I wanted to go in with silver chain and kind of have that mixed metal look. I really love that when it comes to minimalistic wall art. I think it adds a lot of detail and interest. So I went ahead and I cut those apart and I actually just hot glued those on to the chain, which I would never do nowadays. I would definitely use a jump ring if I was to recreate this project, but I think back then I didn't have jump rings. And honestly, this was going to be a super, super lightweight project in the end. So I knew the hot glue was going to hold for sure. And I think the varying lengths of silver chain across this piece kind of give a lot of detail. If you had everything at the same level, it honestly in the end would kind of just look a little bit boring. So I love mixing up the lengths of chain for those vertical sections to make sure that the moons are kind of hanging at different levels once you actually hang it up on the wall. And this is what the chain base is going to look like. And the next step is going to be cutting out some moon shapes. So you can totally print out some shapes if you'd like to, or you could freehand them like I did. I just kind of penciled them onto a piece of paper, cut them out. I love the organic look of it. And I just glued them on with some hot glue and that finished off your wall hanging.
I personally love a good hanging planter, and I also love concrete, so this project is basically the best of both worlds for me. So I started off by mixing up my concrete mix with a little bit of water here. You're going to want this to kind of basically be the consistency of like a pancake batter. As you can see here, this one is a little bit thicker, but that totally works as well. And the mold that I'm going to be using is actually just a simple little, I guess, clear solo cup. And then in the middle there, I'm applying a Dixie cup, and I'm pressing it down on the inside. Next, what I'm doing is grabbing some hemp cording or whatever string you want the hanging planter to be hanging from and you're going to tie knots onto the ends of them. The knots are basically going to be like extra support so once we press this down into the concrete the knot is kind of going to be as covered in cement and allow it to not be pulled out. If it's just a string you could imagine kind of being able to pull the string right out but that knot is just like an extra reinforcement. So you're going to want to go ahead and let that dry overnight or until it is nice and cured and then pull off your plastic cup in the end and remove the Dixie cup on the inside. Now you can go ahead with a sand file or whatever you have some sandpaper a nail file I mix those words together to make sand file to sand away any excess concrete tie your strings into a loop at the top and that finishes off your concrete planter Now this next project is actually one that was inspired by anthropology. I bought a wall hook a while back and so many people were like, can you please, please like recreate this on your channel? And so I did. I basically found this wooden wall hook blank from Michaels or Joanne, some craft store, and I ended up spraying it with my brass spray paint. So it had the similar brass look to the anthropology piece. And then I went ahead and Googled the constellation for Leo. That is what I personally am, but you can totally change this up for your own star sign. I just did Leo for myself. And then I went in with a little bit of black acrylic paint and just dotted this on wherever the stars were in that constellation. And then I connected them with some lines and just kind of cursively wrote Leo at the bottom. I guess it's kind of lucky that I'm a Leo because I didn't have to write that much. And then around the edge, I went ahead and I just did a little dotted kind of pattern just to add a little bit more detail. And that finishes off your wall hook. This brass mirror here is one of my favorite DIYs I've ever created. I've actually done a couple different versions of it on my channel throughout the years, and it's just such a fun project to create. So all you're going to need for this is actually some artificial flowers and a mirror of choice. So these artificial flowers are just from a craft shop. You can get them at the Dollar Tree or Joann's, Michael's, wherever you want to get them from. And I just went ahead and started by giving them a good dousing of brass spray paint. And this is actually going to just be our first layer of spray paint, kind of just to give an overall coat of that brass color. And next, what you're going to want to do is actually kind of find the placement on your mirror for these pieces and use some heavy duty hot glue to glue and adhere them down to your mirror. So once you have them all glued and adhered down, this is where we're going to go in with our brass spray paint once again, making sure to cover up any of the mirror sections and really thoroughly coat those pieces in that brass spray paint to give it a full on finished look. And of course, we're going to need something to hang this up with. So I didn't want to use this white yarn here. So I just actually sprayed it with the gold spray paint and it ended up looking great in the end. I adhered it on the back side of our mirror and that finishes it off. I'm sure we've all seen these mesh trash bins at the dollar store, at Walmart, at Target, wherever it might be, but they're always not the cutest. So I want to share with you guys how you can add just a little bit of faux leather to this piece to make it more rustic and overall just cuter in the end. So the first thing that I did was I went ahead and I marked three inch wide sections and then drew a line to create a three inch wide strip that I could then cut with my scissors because we are going to then go ahead and fold over those raw edges into the middle. So we're going to be ending up with a one and a half inch wide strip of this leather material. So you're going to want to do this that way you have nice clean edges on the front there and then on the front side of your wastebasket using a generous amount of hot glue you're going to be applying your faux leather material and then creating kind of a little loopy handle at the top which again is just for visual interest there's no like rhyme or reason to this piece and then I cut off the excess at the bottom there and went in with a little bit of white embroidery floss I probably should have done this with like some jute cording or something just to match the vibe a little bit better but I think it turned out cute nonetheless so I went in and I just added a little X shape to secure the leather in place a little bit more, but also add a bit of detail to that edge there. I think this adds a nice touch, tie it off on the back side, repeat on the opposite side, and that finishes off this basket.
This chunky tassel blanket is one of my favorite throw blankets I've ever created. I actually still own it to this day and style it all the time throughout my apartment. So I started off with this blanket base, which was actually from Target. And then I went ahead and I grabbed a couple of yarns that I thought that kind of complemented the blanket. And I cut them into 12 inch long sections. And you're gonna want a ton of these to create a ton of different tassels along your piece. So I'm using a really chunky wide crochet hook to go through the knitted section of this blanket. And I'm going to then go ahead, fold my yarn in half and pull it through the loop that we created with our crochet hook. So you're gonna pull through all those strands of yarn. Once all three of them are pulled through, you're going to then go ahead and pull the tails through that loop and that finishes off your first tassel. Now to determine kind of the pattern you wanna go with or where you want to apply your tassels, you can map it out first if you'd like to, but I just went ahead and did chunks all around the blanket, making sure that I had kind of like an even spaced amount of chunks of different colors of yarn that just add pattern, texture, and dimension to the piece. You can also just go around the edge and do like a tasseled edge if you want to, but I just wanted to mix up the yarn. So I did a variant of white yarn. I also added in some that had these gray kind of flecks throughout it. And then the end, I just created these little tassel sections on the blanket, which just kind of give a little bit of detail. This sunburst mirror here was actually the first project I ever shared on my YouTube channel. This is my first ever DIY project that I created and I really think it's still really cute, honestly. So I started off with an eight inch round mirror and I used two different sizes of popsicle sticks. I used these longer kind of skinnier ones and then I also used your traditional ones as well. The first thing that I did was I went around the bottom lip or bottom edge of our piece with the longer skinnier popsicle sticks and hot glued them into place where I wanted them to go. And once you have them all glued down, it's gonna look something like this but as you can see, it just kind of seems a little bit boring. So in between each of the popsicle sticks, I actually glued a vertical popsicle stick. So it was kind of sticking upwards, which just adds dimension to the piece. I feel like every one of these voiceovers, I'm like, it adds dimension, it adds texture, but it really does. Like, I think this adds a nice bit of visual detail. So I went ahead and I added a vertical popsicle stick just glued in between all of our longer sticks. This also kind of gives a height variant. So as you can see, the first layer of sticks is a bit longer than the second layer, which I love. And then on the backside I just glued down a little ring of a macrame cording to hang it up on the wall and that finishes off your new sunburst mirror. Creating a concrete coaster set is actually extremely affordable and not as hard as it looks. All you're going to need is a couple of solo cups, some concrete mix, some water, and a hot glue gun. So the first thing that we're gonna be doing is actually cutting the top rims off of our solo cups and creating our very own mold. And I'm going to be gluing down the top of our solo cups to the notebook cover there. So we're basically creating our very own mold. So next what I wanted to do was mix up the concrete and pour it into the mold that we created. So you're just going to tap that in, making sure that you added enough hot glue around the perimeter of your mold to where the concrete will not seep out at all. Let that cure overnight and once it is fully cured you could basically demold your new set of coasters by pulling off that notebook cover and this is what they end up looking like. You could sand the edges with a nail file or a little bit of sandpaper to give them a nice finish and that's the finished project. Next up, we're gonna be making this DIY macrame, really cute kind of like lantern candle holder. So I'm gonna be using a mason jar along with some hemp cording. And the first thing that I'm going to be doing is measuring out about two yard sections of my hemp cording. And you're going to need, I believe six pieces in the end, six or eight. So what I'm gonna be doing is starting out by gluing down my pieces in the center here. So I actually did end up using eight strands and you're going to want to glue them so that you have all evenly placed out eight sections on the bottom of your mason jar. And then I added a little bit of hot glue to hold them into place as I started the macrame process. But this is just, again, a very repetitive process like a couple of the earlier projects. We are creating a collection of square knots where we grab the neighboring strand and we connect it to a knot that was neighboring it as well. And you're just gonna be repeating this process until you reach the top rim of the jar. So I just kind of work in a circle and create a knot as you can see here, twist it, move on to our next side, create a knot, twist it, move on to our next side, create a knot. And as you keep creating these knots, it's going to get tighter and tighter up towards the top, which is what you're going to want so that it kind of forms around your mason jar shape. So as you can see here, getting closer to the top here, it really creates a nice nautical vibe. It almost gives like a fishnet look to the piece. And this is what it ended up looking like in the end. You can tie off your strands. You can turn it into a hanging planter if you want to and leave them long or glue them as I did and just pop a candle inside as a candle holder.
cork is another really fun material to work with and it's also super affordable. I got these cork sheets at the dollar store and I wanted to turn them into some geometric wall decals, which you can just use as wall decals if you'd like to, but you can also actually pin things into them and use them as kind of like a little pegboard. So the first thing that I did was I just created triangle shapes out of the square shape and I highly suggest using an X-Acto knife for cutting cork. It is so simple and easy. All you have to do is just kind of create a couple of strokes across using a ruler and the cork will cut nice and smoothly. So I went ahead and I created these. I also went ahead and created some smaller ones as well, just using a fourth of the cube. And in the end, I had all these different triangle shapes, which I could then go in and add a little bit of paint to detail to. So using a little bit of scotch tape, I just applied that on the edge there. And this one in particular, I wanted to have a nice little white edge. So I went ahead and I added some white acrylic paint on there. I also painted some fully white as well. And once you're done, you can pull off your acrylic paint and you can just attach these to the wall using some 3M mounting squares and that finishes off this project. Another super affordable wall decor piece is a pressed flower wall art. And you can make this on a canvas, you could put it inside of a shadow box frame, whatever you want to do, but all you're really going to need is a couple of florals and leaves that you could find out in the garden or on a walk down the street. So as you can see here, I just picked up a random variety of different flowers and leaves, and we're going to be using a bit of parchment paper to press these in between some heavy objects. So the first thing that I did was actually rip off a piece of parchment paper, place another piece on top, and on top of that, I placed a ton of my books from school or when I was going to school on top of that and you're gonna want to let this dry for about two to three full days or until all the water has been drawn out of the pieces and they are completely dry and flattened ready for the next step of the process so as you can see here I have all these flattened leaves and flowers and lastly the next step in the process is just to glue these down to a canvas or some form of frame so I ended up lining them up I just thought it added a nice minimal approach to this piece but you can scatter them around create patterns however you want to do it but in the end you come up with this really cute dried floral wall decor piece Whenever I create these Ikea rugs here on the channel, you guys always love them so much. And this is going to be one of the designs that I've done. I believe I've done about three to four of them, but I'm using the Low House rug, which is basically a jute knotted rug from Ikea. And I'm also gonna be using some masking tape to mask off any sections that I want to apply the spray paint to. So as you can see here, I applied two borders that ran horizontally, and then I applied a ton of vertical strips. And each one of these vertical strips took up about two different knots. So I kind of used my knots as measurement and my masking tape that I used, which I believe was about one inch wide ended up covering two full knots so I was able to kind of measure out as I went and then I went ahead and applied on my paint here so I'm just using a regular white acrylic paint now since I've actually created a couple of these rugs since this project was created I highly suggest using spray paint as opposed to just acrylic paint honestly it is so much easier you can just spray right over the top of your masked area wait for it to dry peel it off I also feel like the paint goes on so much more opaque as well and if you do this process you could apply a clear coat on top to lock it in Next up, we are creating a set of felt coasters, which are really cute, and I actually upcycled this Puda box from Ikea. I had this in my stash for a while, and I just never ended up using it for any form of storage. So I was like, why don't I go ahead and actually recycle it and turn it into some coasters and just use the fabric because I didn't find a use for the actual box itself. So all I had to do for this process was honestly use a ramekin. I traced around the outside of the ramekin to create my coaster size, but you can use whatever you have kind of as a marking utensil. And then I went back in with a pair of scissors and just trimmed around all of the excess and that honestly you guys finishes off this project it was super simple and easy I just felt like the material on this was super thick and very durable so I thought it'd be great for a set of coasters I also intentionally drew right over the top of the stitching line because I love the detail I added and I just locked in those seams with a little bit of glue on the edge and that finished off this coaster set This project here, you guys, really takes me back because this was such an old DIY that I created, but honestly, it's still such a cute concept and you can totally use this on really anything that is a glass and kind of create a frosted glass look. So the first thing that I actually did was just grab some regular old printer paper and I'm going to be cutting out some triangle shapes, which are going to be our masks. So I cut a two inch wide strip of paper and from that paper, I went ahead and freehand cut a couple of triangles. I just like the organic shape of a freehand cut triangle as opposed to measuring them all out. I think it kind of adds a little 
bit more of a boho element to this piece. And I went ahead and I actually adhered these down with just some water-based glue, just an Elmer's glue stick, because it's super easy to remove from glass. It's kind of just a temporary uh, fixation at the moment. And then what I went ahead and did was actually spray on top of it a coat of sea glass spray paint. And as you can see, when you go ahead and remove those masked triangle sections, it reveals the shiny clean glass underneath and you have a frosted glass over top, which overall gives you this kind of nice embossed etched look. I always actually get requested for a ton of decor that includes like an initial or something that you can customize a little bit. And I love this take on an initial decor piece. I think this would be so cute in an office space. So I actually picked up one of these oversized paper mache letters, which I believe I got it at Michael's. And I also got these kind of balsa wood stick sections, which I'm going to then be tiling on the front of our letter to almost give it a restored wood look, as opposed to making it look paper mache or just painting it or adding to it. I thought the wood really elevated the overall vibe and it was still a very affordable option. So all you have to do is actually just place the wood on the front side, flip it over to the back side and use a pen to just kind of mark off the section you want to cut and use a pair of scissors to simply cut away any excess. And do keep in mind in the end that you can go back in with a little bit of sandpaper if you need to, to sand away any harsh edges. But once you are done, you kind of get this tiled wood effect that I think looks so stunning in any space. For our next project, I really wanted to create a functional DIY with supplies that I already had in my stash. So I ended up opting for using a coat hanger from Ikea, one of the wooden ones, and some thick gauge brass aluminum wire. Now this wire is super easy to bend, so all that I had to do to start was just kind of wrap it around very haphazardly. There is no rhyme or reason to this at all. And as you want to add a hook to your piece, all you're going to do is kind of create a stick section that comes off of your coat hanger, as you can see here. I bent it in half at the end and then brought it back up to the start where I'm able to then continue continue down the length of my coat hanger. So as you're wrapping this around your coat hanger, I just did it very organically. There was no rhyme or reason to this um, in any way. And as I wanted to add a hook again, I went ahead, I created my hook section by bending the wire in half, bringing it back up to create a little hook shape. And then I went ahead and I sprayed the top with a little bit of brass spray paint and that finished off this project. Here is a way to take a simple mirror and turn it into something a little bit more elevated and rustic. So I wanted to turn this into a jewelry holder. So I started off with a square mirror. I also used some balsa wood, some spray paint, a couple of hooks, and some E6000. So the first thing that I did was I cut my balsa wood to be the width of my mirror, and I went ahead and screwed my hooks into one side of the balsa wood on the bottom there. So I went ahead and I screwed in, I believe, about five of them. And I used this hammer finish dark bronze spray paint to give this more of a metalized finish. And I think it looked really, really cool in the end. You could spray this or stain it as you would like. And then on the bottom of the mirror, I went ahead and I applied our hook section, as you could see. And on the top of the mirror, I just applied the other wood section just to kind of make it look like it is framed off. And on the back side, you're gonna to wanna to also allow it to be hung up. So I used a little bit of chain that I had in my stash, I used E6000 to adhere it down. Once it was fully dry, you could hang this up and store your jewelry. Affordable furniture DIYs are always a hit here on Lone Fox, so I wanted to share with you guys how I created this nightstand from a simple crate from Ikea. So this is the Naglig crate, which you could pick up for about $10 at Ikea. And I went ahead and I started off by just constructing it based off the instructions. You have to just screw all of the elements together. And once they're all screwed up, you have a basic wooden crate. Now on the bottom of the wooden crate, I wanted to add a leg. So I elevated it off the floor with these little wooden trinket dishes or like little wooden trays that I found at the craft store as well. They are just the simple wood, very similar to the one from Ikea, and I just E6000 these down. You could also use a nail gun if you'd like to, and once you are done, you have a very simple, minimal nightstand. This next piece of decor is a great way to add more of your accent color throughout your space because it's totally customizable. You can select the colors of yarn you want to go for. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is actually tie a piece of yarn across the bottom side of this ring here. This is going to be where all of our other yarn sections are going to be hanging off of. And I suggest starting from the bottom. That way you could build up and layer your yarns as needed. So all we're doing here is a simple lark's head knot by cutting a little bit of yarn, probably about six inches long because you could trim it after if needed and attaching it to the yarn piece that we added on originally. So I just varied up my yarn a little bit. I did a little bit of the white fleck and also the yellow on the first section. And then here in the second section, I opted for this twisted yarn that had yellow and white in it. I added a little bit of blue. And then on the third section at the top, I just filled it in with a couple more colors. So once you are completely done, it'll look something like this. You could trim off the excess and here's your decor piece.
This is a really fun multi-purpose DIY. I created a memento lampshade because lampshades can be a little bit boring. So if you have a basic lamp, especially in like a dorm room or a small space, spice it up with a simple hack here. All that I started off by doing was just painting my clothespins how I wanted them to look. So I think I did a mixture of black and then also just the raw wood as well. All you have to do for this project is literally glue down the clothes clips all the way around the exterior of the lampshade, just kind of spacing them out however you would like them to go. And keep in mind, wherever you place a clothespin, you can add a Polaroid or a little memento and that finishes off this lampshade. It's actually really fun redoing these voiceovers because I forget how many fun projects I could recreate currently that I would love to have in my apartment, such as this wool magazine holder. These are super, super affordable. All I did was I picked up this gray toned felt from the craft store. Each felt sheet costs under 50 cents and I cut it in half to start. Then what you're gonna wanna do is actually fold it into thirds like this. That way you have nice clean edges on the front side and it doesn't have any cut edges. I ended up using some Fabri-Tac adhesive to glue it down on a third of the piece. Then I added a little bit more adhesive on top of that, fold it over once more, and you have a nice tripled up felt piece, which you are going to want to make two of. And then once you have both, you're going to glue them together just about an inch on the bottom. Just glue these two strips together, let them dry. Once it is dry, use a push pin to secure it in the wall and place your magazine inside. If you love a freehand, very artsy project, this one is for you. I created this as a dorm decor piece a while back, and it is just a kind of moon phase galactic pillowcase. I just used a simple white IKEA pillowcase and some black fabric paint to paint on some stars and moons around the exterior of this pillow. I also added a couple of constellations, and that was all. I still to this day create these reworked sweaters for Christmas gifts or birthday presents. All you're going to need is a couple of old sweaters. This is a Champion and also an Illinois sweater from H&M. And all I did for this project was just cut the sweaters directly in half down the middle. The great thing about this project as well is that you can actually get two finished sweaters from your two original sweaters. So it's not like you're scrapping any uh, material at all. So what you're going to want to do is actually pin the right sides of your sweaters together down the front. And you're going to be sewing this up the entire front side using just a straight stitch. I suggest doing the triple straight stitch so you have a nice strong bond. I removed those pins and on the back side you're going to put right sides together once again. Add a pin every couple of inches to hold the fabric together. Add a nice straight stitch all the way throughout and that finishes off your brand new reworked sweater. A couple years back, I received a Lalapo candle for Christmas, and it had a really funky kind of hammered metal tin container that it came in, and I wanted to recreate my very own for a fraction of the price. So I found this metal tin here on Amazon, and I literally went to town on it with a hammer, just hammered it all the way around, gave it a very distressed and just unique look. So as you can see, these are going to be our candle canisters. Now these candles here are a couple that I've had in my stash for a while. And I placed them right on top of a pan, just right over the heat. However, I would never do this to this day. I highly suggest getting a like boiling pot that you could actually add some water inside of, adding about two to three inches of water, letting that boil, and then placing your candles inside and letting it slowly melt over time, kind of like a double boiler method. But once it is fully melted, you can go ahead and glue a new wick on the inside of your canister. And then once that is adhered inside, you can go ahead and pour your melted wax very carefully into your canister there. I actually poured both candles in here and mixed up the waxes, but you can totally do one style or create your very own scent with some essential oils, and that finishes off your Hammer 10 candle. This pillowcase was such a fun one to recreate. It was inspired by an Urban Outfitters one that I believe cost around $80, and I knew we could take a simple IKEA pillowcase and create our very own with just a little bit of black fabric paint. So I started off by cutting off any of the tags and using some black fabric paint to paint on the shape of an eyelid, just like a very organic kind of half circle shape. And from there, I went ahead and I added on some eyelashes to this piece as well. If you guys can see, the brush that I'm using has a very, very flat top, and it's almost the width of 
of all of the lines that I'm creating, which I just find makes it a little bit easier when freehand painting like this. And there really is no rhyme or reason to this. I know I say that all the time when I'm painting projects like this, but really as you go, you can add to the piece, take away, and if you mess up, honestly, just keep on working on or add it and implement it into your pattern elsewhere so it doesn't really look like a mess up. So I just went all the way around, added this pattern throughout, and that finished off this pillow. Another oldie but goodie was this geometric wall hanging. I remember when these geometric shapes were super, super trendy in interior design, and if it totally matches your style currently, this is a project you should definitely recreate because it is super simple. But a humongous pointer I can give you for creating this project is to work on top of wax paper or parchment paper and just basically lay your sticks down and apply glue on top of them. That way you're not adhering everything together and having to wait for it to dry and it's sticking to your surface. Just work on top of a wax paper or parchment paper and it will easily be able to be removed. I also use the tip of my hot glue gun to kind of melt down any excess hot glue sections. So I created these three almost pinwheel style shapes and I attached them together using a little bit of yarn. You're just going to use about eight inches of yarn between each section to attach them together. Once you reach the end, just tie a little loop at the top that you can hang it off with and that finishes off your brand new wooden geometric wall decor hanging. This next project was actually another take on that little wall strap that I created with the wool fabric earlier, but this one is just a wall pocket and it is super simple to recreate. You're just going to need two pieces of eight and a half by 11 felt. And on one of the pieces, you're going to start by rimming the entire outside, leaving a two and a half inch section at the top that you're not going to be adding glue to because once you actually adhere this down, the sides and the bottom are gonna be nice and adhered, but that two and a half inch section, you're actually going to wanna to fold down like this, add a little bit of glue to either side as shown, and fold that down that way it kind of creates this little pocket flap lay a couple books on top and once you're done you can hang this on the wall and add whatever you'd like inside This little trinket box turned out super cute, but honestly, the technique that I use to create a crackle finish is just a fun one to have in your DIY skill set. So you're going to definitely need some Elmer's glue, some acrylic paint, and a wooden box of your choice. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is actually go ahead and paint it with the color that you want your cracks to be. So I went ahead and painted it white to start. You could paint it gold if you'd like to and kind of have a gold crack underneath black, which I think would be really pretty, or you could paint it however you'd like. The next step is going to be applying a generous layer of Elmer's glue on the top section that you're going to be applying and then right over top of the Elmer's glue before it can dry literally immediately after applying it go ahead and apply on a layer of your acrylic paint and as it starts to dry the glue will actually separate the paint and create a cracked finish which is really great so the thicker the glue you apply the thicker the cracks and if you want daintier cracks just apply a thinner layer of glue Here's a fun DIY on how to turn your basic pillowcases into these gradient dyed pillowcases. You're just going to need some RIT dye. I use the powder form, a couple of cups, a paintbrush, and your pillowcases. So the first thing that I started off by doing was adding the same amount of water into each cup, and I did use warm water. And next what I did was I actually varied the amount of dye pigment that I applied to each cup. So the first cup I added one teaspoon, the second cup I added two teaspoons, the third cup I added three teaspoons, and so on from there. That way we have an array of pigmentation. And I I went ahead and I started off with my darkest color first because it's just easier to start darkest and go lighter. So I applied about a two inch strip of our darkest color and worked my way down to the lightest section, probably only applying water at the very end. So as you can see here, this is what the gradient dye is going to look like. Wash out the excess dye and style with a couple of cute throw pillows. If you're wanting to DIY a gift for your friend this year, I highly suggest these really cute best friend pillows. Basically, all I did was I grabbed some velvet fabric, some chunky yarn, Fabri-Tac adhesive, and a pair of scissors. And the first thing that I'm going to do is lay out my velvet fabric and just kind of freehand a heart shape or half of the heart shape. So as you can see here on the left side, my fabric is folded in half. That way, when I cut out this shape, I'm going to have two of them. So the first thing I did was I freehanded out half of the heart. Then I cut it out with some fabric scissors. 
Next, what I did was I went ahead and I created a little crack down the center. You can totally make this a straight line if you want to, or you can kind of make it jagged like this. I thought it added a cute little element to the piece. And you're going to need two pieces for the left side and two pieces for the right side. And once you have those cut out, just make sure that you're pinning the right sides of the fabric together or pinning the sides of the fabric that you want to show on the outside sandwiched together. And then go ahead and sew the outside of this and leave about a three inch section opening. That way you can fill it up with your polyfill or your recycled materials whatever you want to put inside to fill up your pillow there so as you can see once they are both completed they're going to look something like this but I did have to add the little best friend detail on the front there so I just used my Fabri-Tac adhesive and just freehand wrote out best friends and it kind of cascades across both pillows because once you put them together you're going to be able to read the full message but I love the idea of having both of them kind of separated but you still understand what it says and that finishes off this pillow Another super affordable set of coasters created here on the channel were these leather wrapped coasters. Now the supplies are very minimal. All you're going to need is some foam board and also some faux leather material. So the first thing that I did was I cut down the scrap piece of foam board into four inch by four inch squares. Those are going to be our coaster size. Next, once you have those cut out, you're going to go ahead and just cut out a piece of your vinyl leather or your faux leather and cut it out with about an inch to spare on all the edges. That way you can go ahead and apply your E6000 adhesive on the bottom side, press it onto your faux leather material and then you're going to press that down just as shown here next what I did was I cut off all of the corners that way we can create a nice clean fold and I also make sure to leave about an eighth inch of material on that corner that way when you fold it up you get a fully covered corner as opposed to having any of the white show through there so I just went ahead and I adhered down all of our flaps on the back side let it dry and cut out a piece of material to glue over the top of those flaps there and once you are done this is your finished coaster set This eucalyptus wall decor is a great way to add a minimal touch to your space. It adds a little bit of greenery, but also a fresh scent of eucalyptus. So all I did was I actually went ahead and I purchased a fresh sprig of eucalyptus from the grocery store. And I'm going to go ahead and just cut off a couple pieces that I like as seen here. And then I'm going to be wrapping around the top of them with a piece of string just to kind of finish off the edge and give it a more polished look for our wall hanging. Tie off your string at the end and leave probably about two to three feet of excess string. That way you can vary the lengths as you apply it to our wooden dowel a little bit later. So just go ahead and tie these off onto all of your pieces of eucalyptus that you want to add. I believe I did an odd number of about seven pieces. So once you have all of your eucalyptus all strung up and ready to go, we can start applying this to our wooden dowel. And when it came to constructing the final piece, I just went ahead and made sure that all my eucalyptus pieces were hanging at different lengths. So it just added a little bit more visual interest and not everything was at the same exact level. So I just double knotted these onto my wooden dowel all the way down, making sure they were nicely secured and once you have them all attached you could hang it on your wall and that finishes off your eucalyptus wall hanging This next project is an Ikea hack where I basically took these wooden cutting boards and I measured an inch in on each of the corners and I marked the inch in spot. That way we can know where we're going to be drilling our holes later because we are going to be turning this into a hanging shelving unit. And this project turned out so cute. I love the way that it turned out in the end. So I just went ahead, brought these pieces outside and used a drill bit that was wide enough for the rope material that we're going to be using here. So as you can see, I got this rope here at the Home Depot. It is a simple nylon rope. And the first thing that I did was I grabbed two pieces of my rope and I I folded it in half at the very middle point and I tied it in a knot as shown here. Next what I did was I measured down about 18 inches from our knot and I just made a little marking on our piece because that is exactly where we're going to be tying our knots on each section. Now the knot is what's going to be holding our shelf in place so you're actually going to want to make sure that all of your knots are in a very similar spot that way your shelf is very level and it's not off center because if you have knots that are hanging lower on one side your shelf is then going to hang lower on one side as well. So using a ruler measure down about 12 inches make a marking and just make sure that you tie your knot in the same spot once again the great thing about this project is you can totally adjust the knots as needed they're not anything that is super tight and once the shelf actually sits on top of the knot it kind of tightens itself naturally you can hang this up and enjoy your new hanging shelf <music> Thank you. 
This next project right here is definitely one of my favorite IKEA hacks I've ever created. I actually used this wooden tray from IKEA and this large mirror that I got at Joann's along with some faux leather material, some E6000, and a couple of wooden blocks. So the first thing that I did was I took my large circular mirror and I'm going to be gluing down some of these little wooden blocks which are basically just going to be spacers and just elevating it off of our tray in the back. And if you wanted to, you can totally just adhere the mirror directly down to the tray, but I ended up using these little wooden blocks just to elevate it off the tray a little bit. I just think that it adds a nice bit of dimension to the piece and it just makes the mirror look like it's actually floating in the center of the tray. And next what I did was I grabbed this faux leather material and I'm cutting out a three inch wide section. And you're going to want to make these strips down the longest side of your fabric because we're going to want very long strips. That way we could create the band that's going to wrap around the outside of our mirror and just give it that very rustic elevated appearance. So using a little bit of hot glue, I just went ahead and I adhered this down the entire strip there, just making sure that I folded it in half. And the reason that I did fold it in half was just to save a little bit of my material. I knew that the folded in half section or the ugly side can face the back of the mirror, which is going to be against the wall. So what I did was I just adhered my strips together and then I E6000 them on the outside of my mirror using clothespins to stick them down as the adhesive dried. Now, what we're going to be doing towards the top here is creating this little section, which is kind of like a triangle. And you're going to want to adhere these two strips together there, place a book on top, let it dry. And once it is dry, you can hang it on the wall. I think this rustic clay bowl was actually my first time ever using clay in a DIY project, and so this is how it ended up turning out. I used a glass bowl from Target and some of this air dry clay from the craft store, and I went ahead and I just added a thick layer of air dry clay on the entire exterior of our glass bowl, and I used a little bit of water to smooth it down. Now I know that sometimes water doesn't work with air dry clay, but specifically for this project, I do remember it smoothing it down quite a bit. And then I went ahead and I pressed a little new base for it and used a paintbrush just to add a little bit of detail into our clay work and this is where I feel like the water totally made a difference you can totally see where I'm adding the water it just smooths out those sections and overall just makes the clay look a little bit nicer so once it was dried overnight I went back in with a sand file and just filed down any edges that were a little bit rough and then I went in with a little bit of black paint that was watered down and just kind of distressed the bowl a little bit added my signature on the bottom and that finished off your rustic clay bowl As many of you guys know, I love making throw pillows here on the channel, so here is a geometric yarn pillow that's really fun to recreate. I just used one of the Vigdis pillow bases, some white yarn, some Fabri-Tac adhesive, and some scissors. So all I started off by doing was grabbing a ruler and just kind of creating a couple of geometric shapes on the front side of this pillow. These shapes are kind of just going to act as a basis for our geometric yarn designs that we're going to be creating on top there. So as you can see, for the first one here, I actually cut every single individual piece of yarn all the way across but as I worked on this pillow a little bit more I realized that I can just make the yarn kind of loop back and forth and I was going to be creating a border on it as you could see here with a little bit of yarn in the uh, end so I knew that those would be covered so I just went ahead and I created these little sections on the front of the pillow filled them in with yarn and once they were done it just reminded me of a piece you would see at Target. I was a humongous fan of vinyl records back in the day, and I always wanted a method for hanging them on the wall, but I didn't want to have to purchase the actual Urban Outfitters frames that were $20 each, so I was able to create my very own with one piece of foam board. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and cut out two pieces of your foam board that are two inches wider or two inches bigger than your vinyl record itself. So I have two pieces here. I cut out a square on the inside of one of the pieces as well to act as the frame. Now on the sides here, I cut out these three eighth inch strips, which are going to act as borders or barriers and the great thing about using the foam board is that it elevates it a little bit so that you can easily slide your vinyl inside so I just used some E6000 adhesive and just glued this around the exterior of my vinyl record once it was placed on the inside there but you do not need to add a piece of this to the top there that way you can slide your record in and out in case you want to ever exchange it for a different one so once that was all glued around the outside I then went ahead and added adhesive to the top of those strips placed on top my frame section there so this is kind of creating our shadow box which you could then slide your vinyl on the inside of. I just wrapped a piece of yarn around the entire exterior inside of the little groove that we created, cut off the excess, tied it in a knot, and I hung this up on the wall and that was my vinyl frame.
This next wall art piece was actually inspired by a piece I saw on Anthropology's website, but it was $600, so I opted to create my very own piece using this $30 gold frame from Target. I took out the paper on the inside and traced it onto a piece of heavy-duty watercolor paper, and I'm just cutting that out there, and I'm going to start by using this golden paint in the color Carbon Black and mixing it with a little bit of water to create my very own watercolor. Next up, using a very thick watercolor brush, I'm kind of just going to start tracing out a couple of loopy shapes on the right side of this piece of paper and drag it over following my reference photo to create a couple of other lines as well. This is definitely a super abstract piece of artwork, so there is no rhyme or reason to this piece whatsoever. And I did also go ahead and darken up some of those sections using the paint just right out of the tube, and once I was done with it, I let it dry, popped it back in the frame, and that finished off this wall art piece. I'm back with one of my favorite materials, resin, and we're going to be making one of my favorite projects, some coasters. So these are some agate coaster molds. You can find these on Amazon if you search agate coaster mold. I also got these dried flowers on Amazon as well, but you can totally dry your own based off of some of the methods that I shared with you guys earlier. But the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and mix half and half of our resin together. So you're going to want to use equal parts of resin and equal parts of hardener. I just find it a lot easier to measure them in two separate cups. That way you know that you have equal parts because if you don't, it's not going to cure properly. So once you do have them mixed up, go ahead and stir it for a couple of minutes and add your glitter. Now, the glitter goes such a long way, you guys. I thought what I added was a small amount, but it ended up being quite a bit. So I stirred it throughout my resin and then I poured a thin base layer into the mold itself. That way I can just go ahead and start placing in my flowers and give them something to grip to. So I placed them right on top, positioned them into the position I wanted them to go into, and then I filled and topped it off with the rest of the resin material. You're going to want to let this dry overnight for about 24 hours or so, and once they are fully hardened and cured you can just pop them right out of the mold and you have these really really cute coasters however I wanted to elevate mine and take them just one step further so I'm using some of this brass gilding paint just go and carefully paint around the edge of these coasters to give them kind of like a metallic finish on the edge I just think it kind of locks in the design and that finishes them off This is probably one of my favorite dollar store projects I've ever created, and I ended up finding a ton of these little canvases in different sizes, and also some assorted faux florals at the dollar store, and I pulled them off of the stem. We're gonna be doing a very similar method to that gold brass mirror that we created earlier, but we're gonna turn this one into a really cute wall hanging. So the first thing I did was I grabbed all my florals from the Dollar Tree, brought them outside, and just gave them a coat of brass spray paint just to kind of get the actual coating process going. We're going to be able to go back in later and really finish it off, but for now, we're going to be using the brass spray paint. The next thing that I did was I went in and I added gold paint to the back side of all of my canvases and I love how it goes over the top of the staple. It really makes it look welded. Um, next moving on we're going to be applying the first set of florals to our wooden dowel. Now from this wooden dowel our little canvases are going to hang. So this is going to be kind of like the most focal point of the piece. I brought it back outside once all of our florals were attached to it and just sprayed any of those excess areas. And last but not least you're just going to go ahead and use some string and apply on your canvas canvases. Inside of these little canvases, you're actually able to go ahead and just pop in a photo or however you want to style them. One of my most viewed videos on my channel is actually this Ikea Hacks video where I turned this Trampa doormat from Ikea into a really cute, just customized doormat. So all you're going to actually need is some black paint and a paintbrush. And what I'm going to be doing is on the bottom left-hand corner, I'm going to be writing the word hello. So just kind of freehand writing this out. You can totally use block letters or a stencil to help you with this. Flipping it completely 180, I'm going to go ahead on the opposite side and put goodbye. This is just such a cute idea. You can actually place this right outside of your door, have the hello face the person as they enter, and the goodbye face them as they leave.
Of course, I had to include a little bit of DIY organization. So I picked up these little folder or paper holders. These are from Ikea. They're just made out of cardboard. And I wanted to transform these into kitchen organizers for my friend James's kitchen. So we ended up going ahead and using some navy blue paper, which matched the color scheme of the kitchen. And I went ahead and just kind of wrote on there what was going to be in each of them. And after I cut them out, I went ahead and added a little white border as well. This is totally optional. You can add it or not, but I just thought I added a cute little touch to the piece. And then all you have to do on the front side of your organizers is just glue them towards the top there and that finishes off these organizers they slip nicely into drawers and you can pull them out whenever you need any of the supplies that are on the inside of them This next project was a really fun one where I ended up using silver silverware. This is just plastic silverware from the dollar store along with a 12 inch circle base. And I went ahead and I broke all of my spoons more towards the actual um, round part of the spoon. That way we had a longer handle section which we could actually glue onto the outside back of the mirror. So what I went ahead and I did was I started by gluing these on and kind of evenly spacing them around the outside exterior. And this is what we ended up having from the back side. And then what I next did was I went ahead and I added the spoon portion as well. Well, this is just going to add a little bit more dimension and detail to the piece and that's just really an inexpensive and structural way on how to elevate any basic mirror. Back into the wall decor and also back into the macrame, we are going to be starting off with a 12 and 14 inch ring for this project. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut out two yard pieces of string, which I'm going to then just slip knot onto the top of our two rings. You're going to want to have two of them to start, simply cross them over as shown here and do a simple half hitch knot to secure it to the bottom left side and bottom right side of the original knot. So all you have to do for this is just wrap it around once as shown, wrap it around one more time, and then just pull your tail right through that loop that it creates. And that is your half hitch knot and from here on out it is pretty repetitive you're just going to go ahead and apply another slip knot on top wrap it underneath and then go ahead to the opposite side and do a simple slip knot to attach it on there this might be a particular project that you want to watch the full video on because it's a little bit challenging for me to cut all of this into a little one minute section for you guys but once you have all of your knots attached it kind of creates this really interesting woven pattern in the middle and you have all of these little tails here which i then went ahead and did a blunt chop on at the bottom just to finish it off on the top back side I added a little loop that I could hang this up on the wall with and that finished off this wall decor project. I really like this one and you guys also have recreated it so many times. Next, we are heading into some of the aesthetic DIYs that I've done on my channel. I absolutely love creating aesthetic DIY projects for you guys, and I do full videos where I take really trendy pieces and kind of turn them into DIY forms. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is just rolling out a piece of clay into the shape of a face. I also went ahead and kind of pinched the edges upwards just to kind of give it a little bit of a lip on the edge, and then I rolled out these thin tubes of clay that I used to kind of decorate the face. So I went ahead and created this abstract eye shape that transcended down into a nose, added a couple of eyelashes, and of course we have had to add a mouth as well. Once that was fully shaped and kind of in position, I went ahead and baked it in the oven for about 25 minutes or until it was nice and solid. I remember seeing these wreath forms at the Dollar Tree all the time and I never knew what to do with them, but I always knew I wanted to create something with a wreath form. So I went ahead and I grabbed this really thin gauge artistic wire and I started off by just wrapping it all the way around the entire exterior of this wreath form. So I just kind of cut off sections and wrapped it as I went, just kind of going around the front side and the back side pretty close together and occasionally also wrapping it around our middle strand or the top strand to kind of just add a little bit more detail and make the wire not look super uniform. So every now and then I would kind of just wrap it around the middle or I'd wrap it around the top and it just added a little bit more interest to the piece. So I went ahead and finished the entire round of this piece and then I went ahead and grabbed some masking tape and I kind of just placed it randomly um, every couple of inches around the frame there and I went in with my gold spray paint thinking that once I removed it it would be such a cool mixed metal design and I just honestly didn't like it that much. So I actually went back with white spray paint and spray painted the full piece white and finished it off with some brass gilding paint around the entire outside edge and also the inner rim and that finishes off your new picture frame.
I actually used this tray earlier in a project, which was that mirror. It is the Stockholm 2017 tray, and I used some of these hairpin legs that I found on Amazon. So all you're going to need in addition to this is some strong bond adhesive. So I actually flipped this tray over, and I'm going to use it as the tabletop for our little table that we're creating. This is going to be kind of like a little side table, and I suggest using E6000 to adhere this leg to the bottom, and also go back in and add E6000 into all of those holes at a generous amount. That way, once it's dry, it almost acts as a nail. And that really finishes off this project a super simple and easy side table recreation. Now this is a super simple way how to create your very own kind of bar cart or little kitchen island section for a small apartment. So I went ahead and I picked up this Mulger little rolling unit and I realized that I wanted to have it kind of have black accents along with the wood accents that it's originally made from. So I kind of mapped out where I wanted my black to be on top of this little reference drawing. And I also grabbed some of these hooks as well along with some black spray paint. So I brought all the pieces outside that I wanted black and I gave them a nice coat of the matte farmhouse black spray paint which is my favorite color from Rustoleum, and I did it on all of the sides. This was so satisfying to spray paint. I also went ahead and grabbed some of these little wooden trays, which I used on a former project as well. I used them as the legs once again, so just making sure to flip them in all directions and give them a nice generous coat of the black spray paint. And once they have fully dried, you can go ahead and reassemble your entire piece. What I did was I just went ahead and followed the instructions, reassembled it as is, and I just love the details of black. On the bottom of this piece, instead of using the rolling wheels, I actually went ahead and secured on those new legs and added a couple of hooks to the side that way we could hang on a little cutting board this was also from ikea i screwed a couple of hooks into the cutting board that way you can kind of have it hang off the side and i thought this was the perfect little bar cart addition to any small space For our next project, I wanted to share with you guys how to create your very own knobs using clay and also these really cute photo holders. So the first thing I did was I kind of created a chunky ball and I just honestly inserted a screw on the inside and this is going to be a knob for a dresser. I'm going to create a triangle shaped one as well. And then right here, I'm kind of just creating a disc and using a popsicle stick to create a slice down the center. This is going to be our little photo holder or memento holder. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and bake these. And once they come out of the oven, you could just simply paint them as you'd like. I use my brown gilding paint on the round knob to kind of give it a hammered look and then on the smaller one I painted it pink added some white details to give it that ceramic vibe and last but not least I just left the actual picture holder completely raw. I personally am not a great painter, but I can definitely do an abstract art piece every now and then. So I picked up this wooden canvas and I started off by painting the entire base of the canvas with this cream colored paint. It kind of has like a little bit of an orangey peachy tone to it, which I love. And next what I went ahead and did was actually go in and mark around the edge about a quarter inch in. That way I could tape it off because I'm going to be adding a yellow kind of squiggled section to the bottom here. And what I mean by that is I'm going to kind of create a line that's a bit more organic and free flowing towards the top there. There. This is kind of emulated off of a mid-century art piece that I've seen. So on the left side, I'm using some black dots to kind of just create an abstract pattern. And then on the right side, I'm filling in all the blank space with some lines. Now on the far left side, I kind of messed up here. I did too many of those dots. So I just went back in and kind of just covered them up with our original cream colored paint. And that finishes off your wall art. This candlestick DIY is actually one of my most recreated projects on my YouTube channel. And all you have to do for this is actually fill up a pitcher or something pretty tall that you could submerge your full candlestick in with some lukewarm water. And you're going to let your candles sit for about 15 minutes or so. Once they come out of that water, they're actually extremely malleable. They almost are like a wet noodle in a sense that you have a little bit of time to shape them however you would like to. So it's really fun to be able to create these very organic and abstract shapes with your taper candles. And it just makes them a little bit more interesting. 
thing. You can even go in with a rolling pin like I did with this one, flatten down the wax a little bit. It's not sticky at all. And then go in and twist it to create a funky twisted candle. So there are a ton of different alterations that you could do for this particular project. I also went ahead and kind of created this looped candle. And lastly, I used two purple candles to kind of create this standing. It's called a duo candle where basically the bottom base is kind of twisted and then it has this really cool kind of double sided candle, I guess you could say. So I went ahead and I tried to melt them together, but it honestly didn't work. I ended up just kind of gluing them together with some hot glue and finishing it off with a little bit of wax. And that is how I finished off all of these really cute abstract taper candles. This next project was one that I kind of just did for fun with materials that I already owned. I used one of the little woven macrame baskets from Ikea along with the round circle object, which is this one right here. I've used this in a previous DIY as well. And I went ahead and I constructed it. And what I kind of realized I could do with these two Ikea items was actually create a basketball hoop, which sounds strange, but I thought it was really cute for like a little boy's room or something like that. So I went ahead and I cut away the mesh from the bag. So we just had this nice little like layer of mesh that I could then use to create my very own net. So what I basically did to create this net was I went ahead and I added a little dab of hot glue every now and then, and I just adhered it around the actual ring of the little Lindrande piece from Ikea. And once it was fully secured around on the backside, I did adhere it all the way on the back and I glued together the net um, kind of on the backside because it was going to be open on the backside. So I glued that together as well. I then went ahead and cut away any excess material that I didn't need to use anymore. And I grabbed that little rimming that was actually the original handle of the bag and I just glued it onto the bottom there just to make it seem a little bit more secure and overall a bit more finished. So once I had that glued on, I was able to attach my very own hook on the backside. And this is how I created a little basketball hoop for a little boy's room or anywhere you want to add this. Now this next project was a super cute idea and I'm going to share with you guys how I would probably do it a little bit differently. So I started off with this plate holder from Ikea and I cut one side off of the plate holder so that I had the little middle stick sections attached to one side still. So as you can see, this is the piece that I'm going to be using. But something I did for this project, I don't know why I did this, but I just glued it down with some strong bond adhesive when I definitely should have drilled some holes in there and kind of lodged the wood pieces in there so it was a bit more secure along with some glue as well. Now these shelf brackets I picked up at the dollar store and I sprayed painted them with my matte farmhouse black spray paint and once I had those done I went ahead and I also sprayed two of these little hooks and my intention for this being used was to actually hang wine glasses upside down on the little dish holder and then on top you can add wine bottles and anything you want to add on the left side on the hooks. This is another project that I actually created a couple of years back, but it is still so, so cute. I wanted to share it with you guys once again. So I found this cotton filled cording. It was a very weird kind of like cotton filled fiber mesh strand. I don't exactly know what it was, but it made for a perfect base for any coaster. So I kind of spiraled it up into these coaster shapes. And then I wanted to add a little bit of detail with a needle and thread. So I grabbed these tiny little copper seed beads and I strung them on my needle and thread, kind of just transferring them down and actually gluing them in the divot of our spiral. So I just glued these all the way around in our spiral. This was inspired by an anthropology coaster set that I had seen that cost over a hundred dollars. I wanted to recreate my own and that's exactly what I did. For our next project, I started off with this 14 inch round wood mirror and I'm going to use my chipboard here and I'm going to be cutting it down to be 12 inches wide and I actually ended up having to add two more inches since it is 14 inches and about six inches tall. So I glued and adhered together two pieces of chipboard and just added a little bit of additional glue on the backside to make sure it was nice and secured. But essentially this is actually going to be fully wrapped in this yarn material. So there is no reason for it to be like extra strong or anything as it will be glued down to the mirror once it is done. So all I did for this next process was just literally wrapped the entire piece in this burgundy toned yarn and I went ahead and I set aside our yarn section and I grabbed this gold washi tape from my stash and I'm going to be wrapping this around the entire exterior of the mirror on the front side to almost make it look like there's a welded gold frame on the outside of this mirror. It just adds a little bit more detail in my opinion so I added that on and then towards the bottom half I didn't add it because I knew that I was going to be covering it with our little yarn wrapped section here so that is exactly what I did. I placed down our little yarn wrapped section and then I also went in and 
and added this little wood strip which I had in my stash onto the top there. So I cut that off and I adhered it down with some Fabri-Tac adhesive, coated it in that same exact gold finish tape and then glued it right at the top there and that finished off our little wall mirror. You can add a hook on the back side if you want to hang it up um, just like I did with a little bit of macrame cord and that finished off this project. This next project blew up on TikTok and I knew I wanted to recreate it here on my channel. So I actually grabbed two different gallons of soda. This is actually just ginger ale gallons. And I went ahead and I cut the tops off with an X-Acto knife and I grabbed this fairy light pack. Now this fairy light pack was from Amazon. And if you plan on running this all the time, I do suggest getting one that plugs directly into the wall as opposed to a battery operated one, which you're gonna kind of have to hide the cord down the wall if necessary. Um, so what I ended up doing was just using the battery powered one. I'm just gonna use this on more special occasions. So I went ahead and I glued the battery pack on the inside and glued the two pieces together and then I added a string which is going to be used for hanging it up. I suggest gluing down the string first rather than adding the polyfill because the string honestly is kind of hard to find once you add all of that polyfill. So make sure to add your string first and then go ahead and just apply clumps of this polyfill material which is essentially what you use to like stuff a doll or stuff a stuffed animal with or a pillow. I just glued this on around the outside and a little tip for you guys that I learned from somebody who actually creates these is to use hairspray to make sure that your polyfill stays together so you can spray hairspray on it as if it's actual hair and it will kind of make it stay together a bit more. This is a really cute way how to make your very own Polaroid magnets for your fridge or any surface that you can add magnets to. So the first thing that I did was I actually went into my Photoshop application and I found a Polaroid image on Google and I just duplicated it eight times and then I went to Pinterest and found a couple of images and just screenshot them into square shapes, just images that I personally liked. And I also did one of myself just to show you guys the different variations you can go for. I popped the images on the inside of each of the Polaroids there and I printed it out as shown. And next what you're going to want to do is just cut them out using an exacto knife so I just cut around all of the edges making sure that each of my little Polaroids was its own image and just kind of making sure to cleanly cut each of the Polaroid pieces because we are going to be adding these onto a foam sheet next which is kind of going to elevate them and just make them a bit more substantial so I went ahead and I cut down different foam squares for each of our little magnets and I glued on top of it our printed out piece of paper and that really finishes off the base of our magnet super simple and very very easy. The last step in creating these magnets is just to apply a little magnet on the back side. I just use these little circle ones from the craft store and you can hang these up on your fridge or wherever you'd like. Here is another anthropology inspired project that I saw online. It was about $60 to $100 per piece. So I picked up this woven placemat at Target for just under $5 and used a little bit of macrame cord. And I cut them into six inch strips and used a crochet hook to weave them on the outside of the entire ring of this placemat. This is just a very repetitive process of looping through our macrame cording around the entire exterior of this piece, trimming it once you're completely done. And then what you're going to actually do is unravel the entire strand of macrame make hoarding. It's kind of like a rope so it is pretty easy to go in there and kind of unravel it a little bit and then you get the individual fibers which I used a little pair of tweezers to just kind of brush out and once you're completely done with that you can again spray some hairspray on these if you want them to stand up a little bit more straight. Add a loop on the back side to hang it on the wall and that finishes off this wall decor. This is a super easy hack to make your very own sea glass vessels. So I got a couple of glass vases from the dollar store and I'm going to be mixing some Elmer's glue with just some basic food coloring to create basically a colored Elmer's glue. And all you have to do from here on out is actually just paint this on the exterior of your glass vessel. And once it dries down, it's going to end up being such a pretty matte color. So I ended up applying just a decent amount of glue and then adding in a couple drops of food coloring. Do keep in mind that it's going to be pretty translucent, but once it dries, 
you're really going to be able to see that color. For this first one here, I just did a nice minty green shade, and for our second one, I added some more Elmer's glue into a Dixie cup, and I just went ahead and I did a blue sea glass, which I love the way that this one turned out. I went ahead and I applied a nice coat on the outside of our vessel, and then you're just gonna let them dry, and once they are dry, they look super cute like this. Back with another Ikea hacks, I'm going to be using this basket, which is the Sniddad basket from Ikea, and I'm going to also be using the Hema light cord. So the additional supplies are just a wire cutter and some hemp cord. So the first thing I wanted to do on this basket was actually remove the handles because I want to turn it into a pendant light as opposed to a basket. So I just cut off these little raffia strands on the side there, pulled out the handle, which was just kind of nail gunned in. And once you have both of those handles removed, we're going to be flipping it over so that way we can create an opening on the bottom for our light cord. So I just went ahead and I actually cut diagonal across from each other out some of those little sections. So I went ahead and I cut this one out. I cut a little bit higher than that. And then directly across from that, I did the same exact method of cutting them out. So I had two open holes here that I was then able to string my light cord through and kind of tie it onto that middle intersection and allow my light to hang in the middle and also me hang it from the ceiling there. So I just dropped through my light cord, wrapped it around, tied it on the inside there, as you can see, in just a simple little knot. And then I strung it back out the top. That way I was able to hang it up. Just insert your light bulb and that finishes off this pendant light. comes to shelf styling, I love these kind of geometric brass or just metal objects. I think they're so much fun. So I ended up creating my very own using these wind twisters from the dollar store. This is what they look like originally. They are so ugly, but I actually glued a couple of them together to start and I used a wooden dowel as kind of the base for our little structure. So I'm going to be sticking that through, applying some hot glue and just hot gluing down our wind twister onto it. But do not worry, we are not going to be leaving this rainbow. We're actually going to transfer it outside and spray the entire thing with a brass or whatever color spray paint you want to put on there. I ended up opting for brass just because I feel like it gave it a very kind of unique and cohesive look. And then of course we needed to create a base for our sculpture. So I got this little wood cube at Michael's and I'm going to be covering it with some marble contact paper just to make it look a little bit more luxury and high end. And I just kind of did this how you would a present. I just cut off different edges and made sure it was nice and flush. Created another one, just a matte black box to give you guys options so you can kind of see what it would look like. And once I had both of my box pedestal bases. I just drilled a hole down the center of them, which I could then go in and apply the stick with a little bit of hot glue so that our sculptures can stand up. So I piped in a decent amount of hot glue, pressed my stick on the inside, just made sure it was standing upright, and do not worry about this at all. It is super lightweight, so it's not going to topple over, and that finishes off our brass sculptural objects. If you're into geometric shapes and 3D art, this one is perfect for you. So I basically went ahead and I grabbed these little wooden dowels here that I got at Michael's, and I'm going to be creating some pyramids out of these. So I actually, again, work on parchment paper for these kinds of projects. That way I can easily peel them off once I am done. So I believe that I ended up creating about seven of these pyramid shapes, and I'm going to be painting three of them pink because we are also going to be going onto our canvas and taping off a diagonal section, which we are also going to be painting that same exact pink color. So on the smaller side, we're going to be painting painting that the pink side and adding three of our little pyramids that we also painted pink onto that side. On the opposite side, we're going to be adding just our wood pyramids just opposite that. And that really finishes off this art piece. It's super simple, but also very fun. When the moon mirror became popular on TikTok, one of the most requested projects I created was this moon mirror. So I figured I'd go out and grab a circular shaped mirror, some joint compound and get to work. So basically for this project, what you're going to want to do is kind of map out where you want your moon shape to be on the right side of your mirror there and spread a decently thick amount of joint compound on that section. I probably did a quarter inch, but you can vary it and make it thicker in some sections. I believe that that also gives it a little bit more texture. And next what you could see me doing is actually going in with a sea sponge and I'm going to go ahead and just create some 
some nice texture throughout the, the area. And lastly, you're going to want to go in with a squirt bottle and just spray vigorously in spots to create craters in your moon. I used some paper towels to just absorb any excess water and went back in with my spatula just to smooth out some sections and add some more joint compound to other sections to kind of create an elevated look. You're going to want to let this dry overnight and as the joint compound dries, it actually cracks a little bit, which I think gives even more texture and dimension to the moon shape. So what I'm going to be doing next is mixing up a little bit of brown acrylic paint with some white to create kind of an off whitish color, which I'm going to go ahead and paint my entire moon shape with just to give it a full coat of one solid color. And then I'm also going back in with a little bit of diluted brown and just some other whites and spray paints, whatever I want to add in here just to kind of add texture and that finishes off your moon mirror. This next project is actually one of the most current projects that I posted on my channel. It is how I took this Ivar shelf side unit and turned it into a blanket ladder. So basically on the inside of the shelf unit, you can see that there are a ton of different holes which allow you to adjust your shelves as you'd like, but I just went ahead and every other hole I actually drilled through all the way to the opposite side because I wanted to be able to add lacing to the sides of this ladder just to give it a little bit more detail than just staining it as is. So that's exactly what I did. I also cut off the very bottom middle post, brought it outside, gave it a nice sanding to ensure that there were no splintered edges and that everything was nice and smooth and I took out my classic black wood stain and gave it a full coat of this stain all the way around using a foam brush. You could totally apply it with whatever you'd like, a paper towel, a foam brush, and just let that dry outside for a full on day. I especially say this for the black color because the black one seems to actually kind of bleed in some areas so the more time you give it to dry the better. I then grabbed some macrame cording and applied some tape to the end of them. This is kind of makes a makeshift needle and just makes it a little bit easier for you to string that cording through the side there. Now, all I did on either side was just create X's on both the outside and the inside, crossing over my macrame cord as I worked my way down to the bottom. And I just really like the way that this added a nice little detail to the side. I think it would also be really cute with some leather cording and that finishes off your blanket ladder. For our next project, we are jumping into something a little bit more intermediate when it comes to macrame. I know some of the earlier projects were a bit more simple, but what I'm going to start off by doing is just cutting some long strands, six foot strands, and you're going to need eight of them. I then went ahead and tied all eight strands into a knot, and this is going to be our very bottom section. So I suggest that you kind of separate them in sections of two and create a plus sign with your macrame cord. Now, what you're going to start off by doing is creating a sequence of square knots once again, which is just right over left and then left over right. That's how you create a simple square knot and I just made these probably about two inches from our base section so we kind of have this little flower shape then grabbing neighboring strands you're going to do the same exact thing creating a square knot with two neighboring strands about the same distance that you created with your first ones from the center knot and just make sure that they're as even as possible this will just make your macrame look a lot better in the end I placed my bowl on top to get an idea of how much more I would need to macrame upwards and for this next section I probably went up about six inches and created another square knot here so as you can see applying my next round of square knots and then we're going to be doing a little bit of macrame which is basically just constant right over left left over right to create these little sections and that finishes off your macrame planter Now this project was a really fun texture that I kind of recreated using some of this lightweight spackle from the dollar store. I also used this glass vessel as well, also from the dollar store. But basically I scooped out this spackling material and it almost has this like moon sand kind of a feeling to it. It feels almost like clay, but it's not too wet, but it's also dry. It just has a very odd texture. So I figured why don't I try going ahead and applying this to the entire exterior of one of these glass vases and creating almost like a stone finish vase. And this piece only cost me around $3 to create. I used two full canisters of that spackling mixture. I also went ahead and applied it on the inside top rim. Once it dries down, it looks like this. Tiled furniture has been super popular across TikTok and social media lately, but I wanted to downsize it for people that maybe are a little bit intimidated to create their own furniture piece, so we are going to be creating some tile coasters. I got these 2x2 two two square tiles from a shop in Los Angeles called Floor & Decor, and I cut them out into 2x2 two two sections to create a small little coaster, and I went ahead and adhered them to a piece of cork board just because I felt like the cork would be a nice material to kind of sit on top of any tabletop, and the tile will not scratch it. So I adhered those down first on all of my coasters. 
and went ahead and make sure that they were nicely attached and then cut them out using an X-Acto knife or a pair of scissors. I brought out some acrylic paint just to see how this would work on top of the tiles and I can tell you guys it worked perfectly. All I did was two to three even coats of this acrylic paint on top of the tiles and also on the sides there. So this is my second coat that I'm applying on using my heat tool to dry it down. And then what I actually did was went in with a Mod Podge hard coat and did two full coats of this hard coat across the entire top and sides of our coaster. This makes it water and weather resistant. And then I brought out my grout which I've used in a lot of different projects that um, I've done tiling in in the past. This is just a nice warm gray grout, so I applied it with my finger into the grout lines, just kind of evenly dispersing it, wiping away any of the excess, and then what I did in the end was I actually used a little bit of caulking and I just applied it to the sides to give it a nice clean finish, and that finishes off these coasters. Now here is another project using a joint compound. I'm going to be using a canvas and also a spatula and a couple of acrylic paints. So essentially we are going to be mixing up and I think this is such an aesthetically pleasing project. It just is so nice to watch it be done. I mixed up some paint with some joint compound to create a very thick kind of essentially paint that I then went ahead and spatula on to a canvas. So I kind of wanted to do a variation of colors. There was no rhyme or reason to this, but I think it would be really cute if you had an accent color in your space to do like an ombre so making it the darkest shade it could be to start and then kind of working your way towards a lighter shade as you go on. So I just did a kind of variance of different colors, some soft yellows, oranges, pale greens, a little bit of pink, and then just a natural joint compound at the bottom there. You're going to want to let this dry and once it has dried you have a cute little decor piece. I think this next project is one of my favorite pillow DIYs that I've done on this channel. I think it just turned out so cute. I basically ended up using some of this wool roving yarn and cutting them into three strip sections because I'm going to be ending up braiding them and turning them into little pieces that we're going to be decorating on top of the pillow. So I started off by tying a knot and leaving just a little bit of a tail on there because we're actually going to be using that as a tassel in the future. And I'm just going ahead and doing a simple braid down this entire section here. Now you're going to need six pieces that are 14 inches braided length and and you're going to need two sections that are four foot braided length. So once you have all of your strands created here, you're going to go ahead and start decorating your pillow. I'm going to be using Fabri-Tac adhesive, which is a fabric glue that works really great and kind of following this pillow that I found on Wayfair, but it was $120 and I was like, we can easily create this for way less. I think this project ended up costing around $15 to create and I used my Fabri-Tac to adhere down my little strips along the front of the pillow. Once I reached the end as well, I went ahead and I just tied them in a knot that way kind of had a little bit of a tassel hanging off the side of the pillow and as you can see here I'm cutting those tassel edges and that really finishes off this pillow it turned out so freaking cute in the end and I think this is a really fun project Here is a super simple DIY for a really cute kind of photo holder or Polaroid holder. All I did was I grabbed some white and black clay that I'm going to be using to create the little holders themselves. So I started off by just working the clay in my hands, making it a little bit warm and kind of forming it into a pyramid shape using some dental floss to create a line down the center. That little dental floss line that we created is going to be able to hold your photo. You can kind of slip it in that line once it is baked. I also went ahead and used some black clay because I wanted to create almost a marbled looking one. So I mixed together a little bit of black or I guess a lot of black and a little bit of white to create more of a black based marble pattern. So I twisted it up, kind of molded it into the shape that I wanted it to be in, used my dental floss to again cut a line and just create the nice edges on that pyramid shape there. Popped them on a cookie sheet and just baked them in the oven for about 20 minutes I would say. And then once they came out you can add any additional details you would like on there as well. So I went ahead and wrapped one of them with some washi tape and used a little bit of my brass gilding paint to go ahead and paint the top of it as brass. Allow that paint to dry and you can slip your photos or Polaroids in these and store them on a desk or shelf.
This next project is a shell trinket tray with a little bit of an artistic touch. So I basically went ahead and found these large shells on Amazon and I'm going to be using the inverse of the shell to create some small trinket trays. On this first one, I'm using some black acrylic paint just to almost create like a Dalmatian spotted abstract pattern. On the second one that I'm doing here, this one's going to be a little bit more funky. I'm kind of following a retro modern pattern and using some pastel tones to map out the pattern on the inside. I'm just doing some horseshoe shapes, kind of some fish shapes, some rings some lines, some clouds, whatever you have, you can just create them as you would like to. I also went ahead and kind of created this pink ombre shell. And then you're going to want to seal the entire piece. That way it's nice and finished off. So I'm using the same Mod Podge hard coat I used on those tile coasters, going in and just painting the hard coat on the top. I suggest doing two full coats of this. Once you have it dried down, you have your finished off little shell trinket trays. Whenever I would go to the dollar store, I would always see these hula hoops and I finally picked one up and decided I'm going to be creating a DIY with this. So I ripped off the exterior pink and silver lining and I spray painted the hoop black to start. And then I used these campfire skewers that are also from the dollar store and I applied a little bit of wood stain to them. So using the early American wood stain, I just wanted to warm them up a little bit as they were kind of more on the yellow side. And then I used my industrial scissors to go ahead and cut these down to the lengths that I wanted them to be. These are basically going to be two different strips in the middle section that we are going to be applying some yarn to. So for our underside, we're going to be applying this more tan tone. So I did two to three strips per section and just kind of Lark's head knotted it on to our dowel there. Moving on to the white section on top, I did the same exact thing with the white roving yarn and I glued down the two different sections so that they overlaid each other and also created this little section at the top that kind of created a triangle. And overall, I feel like it really just unified the piece as one. It kind of before just looked like I had some random yarn strands hanging there but when I added that top piece it really made the full section look like it was complete. I used a little bit of tape and a steamer to go ahead and steam my strands and cut them into a nice blunt cut and that finished off our wall decor. I absolutely loved what this wall decor piece turned out. It was so freaking cute. So I went ahead and started off by taking this little wood balsa wood piece that I got at the craft store and I cut it into a two foot long section. So using my saw, I cut that down and then I went ahead and I cut a ton of pieces of macrame cording at the same exact length. I believe for this project, I cut them to about four foot long sections, but you can totally alter it as you would like to. And using some hot glue, I went ahead and started placing it down my strips. Now you're going to want to figure out how many strips you want to have in your first section because we are then going to be transferring them over to the opposite side and gluing them down. So you're firstly going to want to figure out how long that section of macrame glued down is. It was about 10 inches. So I measured in 10 inches on the opposite side. So I knew where to start gluing down because you're going to want to basically start with your first strand that you glued down, glue that first strand down to your 10 inch marked section on the opposite side and continue along. Once you have them all glued down, you can actually bring this over to a dye bath and give it a nice dip dye. So I started off with a light color, kind of dipping it all the way in, adding a bit more dye, dipping it partial way in, adding a little bit more dye, and then dipping it a little bit of the way in. And then once you are fully finished with this piece, you can let it dry and that finishes off your ombre macrame wall decor. Here we have another fun Lull House Ikea rug hack. This is using the same exact masking tape we used prior. This one is actually a little bit wider than that one, but I started off by taking a 12 inch strip and finding the exact center of the rug and placing down my 12 inch strip in a horizontal fashion. Once you have your 12 inch strip placed down, everything else just kind of comes from there. You're going to want to go ahead and place down your tape as shown here. Now I just went ahead and made sure that every section that did not have tape was exactly two knots wide. That way when we sprayed our black on there, there was more of the actual natural part of the rug as opposed to the black there. I wanted the black to be a little bit more um, just like not as present as the natural jute itself. So I went outside, sprayed it with some black spray paint so that way all those sections were covered, brought it back inside once it was dried and pulled off all that tape to reveal your brand new rug pattern. This one ended up being a really cool kind of abstract geometric rug and I love the way that it turned out.
This was actually a project that I created out of need for this specific piece. I really wanted a cement tissue box holder, so I decided why don't I go ahead and create my own. So I went ahead and I mixed Mod Podge with Cement Mix. So my reasoning behind this was is I felt like if I was just go ahead and mix up the concrete as you normally would with some water, it would probably just fall right off the exterior of our tissue box holder. So I went ahead and I mixed it up with Mod Podge to kind of create more of a pasty glue material, which I was then able to brush on top of this raw wood box, which I found at uh, Michael's craft store. So I went ahead and I started by painting a generous coat of our cement paint on the outside here. I think this is a really great technique too, because you can really give anything a nice cement coat finish, like whether it be a table lamp or something thrifted, you can actually give it a pretty decent cement coat with some Mod Podge and some cement powder. Just let it dry and you're good to go. Wow, you guys, we have made it to Project 90, and this one is a really, really cute one. I ended up getting this bubble mold off of Amazon. It is a basically a bubble candle mold, and I went ahead and I started off by piercing a hole in the bottom middle using an embroidery needle. That way I was able to string a wick through this area because I'm going to be melting down some of this soy wax in a double boiler method where you basically take a pot, fill it halfway up with water, and then put your wax inside of a vessel that is glass or whatever material you have. You're going to place this in the inside of the pot and melt it down as you go. So just kind of melting it down slowly and gradually until you have all of the wax melted. And I also knew that I wanted to add color to this candle. So I started off with the brown kind of oversaturated wax pellets. I found these on Amazon. They are basically just meant for coloring your wax candles. So I went ahead and I dropped a couple drops of the brown in there. And then it was time to go ahead and pour the wax into our mold. So as you can see here, I kind of created my very own mold holder with a paper cup. However, I do not suggest this because the weight of the wax inside of here actually ended up indenting the uh, underside of that cup into our candle. So as you can see here, I went ahead and I applied a clothespin to hold the wick in place. I let the wax fully cool, but as I took this one out, I love the color, by the way. It's like a deep caramel color. As I took it out, you can see that all of the top ball edges just kind of got indented. So I ended up making a second one a little bit lighter in shade, and this one was perfect. I love the way that these candles turned out. This next project is one that you might not believe is a dollar store based project, but it really is. I got this outdoor wooden picket fence from the dollar store. It was $1.99 and then I went ahead and I used my jigsaw to cut off all of the kind of pieces that were sticking off of the middle section. So you're ending up with a piece that looks like this. I then went ahead and grabbed some sandpaper just to sand down any of those cut edges to ensure they were nice and smooth. And I brought out once again, my classic black Varathane wood stain to give this an entire coat of this classic black stain. Now, now the thing I liked about this piece in particular is I think it had a finish on it so it kind of didn't soak in some of the stain but it allowed you to see some of that wood grain a little bit better which I loved. So I soaked this piece of raffia cane material in water for about 20 minutes and then I cut it down to the width of our piece. I'm going to be stapling this to the back side so that you can actually see that woven cane through the little openings on the front side. So using a staple gun I stapled all the way across the bottom there. I then pulled it taut and stapled across the sides and across all the little middle posts as well. And then on the front side of this piece, I went ahead and I used a drill with a really small drill bit to create a pilot hole for all of our little hooks to go into. I thought this would be such a cute jewelry holder in your bedroom. I feel like it looks super elevated or even a key holder by your front door. So once you're finished screwing in those hooks, you can just go ahead and hang this wherever you'd like to use it and that finishes off this project. This is a really fun kind of artistic artsy hack on upcycling old prints that you might not like anymore or old art in general. This is also a great way to take thrifted art and just make it look so much more interesting. So what I actually did was taking the entire art piece in the frame itself, I went ahead and I taped off a diagonal section and then taped off any area that I didn't want my spray paint to hit. I also did the smaller one here, which kind of had an emphasis on yellow in the photo. It had yellow daisies, but on this opposite one, I ended up doing a nice little cream toned paint on the smaller one. One, I did a yellow glossy paint and once you remove the actual tape from these pieces and you have a nice generous coat of the spray paint on there you just are left with such a unique kind of abstract art piece and I love how the frame matches the paint on the picture itself it's just a great way to elevate any old artwork or something that you might not like anymore
For our next project, I'm gonna share with you guys how to make some really cute cement or concrete planters. So I started off with some of this cement mix. Now this is not the cement mix I currently use. This one has so many large rocks in it. I actually suggest getting the pre-sifted cement mix that comes in the tub from Lowe's or Home Depot. And what I ended up doing was just mixing this with water and turning it into the consistency that I want it to be, and then pouring it into a foam cup, which is going to be the mold for our planter. Now pressing inside of that foam cup, I am applying a little kind of solo shot glass which you're going to want to weigh down with a couple of rocks or heavy stones. That way it sits in the middle of your cup and allows it to dry. And this is going to be the mold base for your piece. So once it has fully dried, you could remove that inner solo cup. You have your little place that you're now going to put your plant inside of, and you can also cut away the foam cup from the exterior. I can definitely say that foam cups really create a beautiful mold for any project. It's very, very smooth in the end, and I like the finish that it gives. So sanding that top rim just to kind of give it a finished off look look. You could then go in with a little bit of paint to add a detail or just leave it as is. So on the side here, I used my silver gilding paint and I just painted the side of this silver, making sure I had a nice straight line with my tape. You can also do it um, horizontally or vertically, but once you have them all taped off, these are your finished concrete planters. If you're in need of a boho pendant light, I have you covered with this Ikea hack. I basically ended up using two of these wooden bowls that you could find in the kitchen section with a large hole drill bit because we are going to be drilling through the exact center of both of these bowls, both the large one and the small bowl. And next, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and start stringing some wooden beads onto a jute cord or whatever cord that you have that kind of matches the color tone of your bowls there. So to get our pendant shape, I'm actually going to be gluing the bowls on the outsides together. So as you can see, it's kind of creating this almost very I guess light shape I feel like this is a very kind of mod light shape and around the center section where we added the glue I'm going to be tying on our wooden beads that's kind of going to add our boho element to this piece now for our light cord I picked up a basic light cord from Ikea and I ended up wrapping the entire cord with our jute rope that way it just matched the aesthetic of our pendant light to start you're going to go ahead and glue this directly down in the center applying a generous amount of Gorilla Hot Glue you're just going to want something very industrial strength that way you can press this down in the center. Now on the underside, you're going to want to also apply on this piece, which kind of just finishes it off and makes it look a little bit more finished. And then pop your bulb in and you are good to go. This is my first time ever trying punch needling and it was so much fun. I loved it. I basically use an embroidery hoop with some monk's cloth, which is the proper material you're going to be needing for punch needling. I cut away any of that excess on the outside of my embroidery hoop and then I went ahead and started to draw out the design that I wanted to go for. So I kind of wanted something a little bit abstract, a little bit geometric. This was my first time, so I didn't want anything too complex. And using my punch needle tool, which you could find these on Amazon, you're going to string through the yarn of choice that you're going to go with. And and start with the outline of your shape first. So I went ahead and did this larger half circle shape with this orange color. I did the outline and then I filled it in on the inside. Now what I can give you tip wise for punch needling is just to make sure that you punch all the way down. That's what's going to create the loop on the opposite side and make sure that none of your rings come out as you go along. So I went ahead, I did the white middle section. I also added this little tan section and then I did a yellow border all the way around the exterior and then I filled in the white with the yellow as well. And then once you are finished off, you can cut away any of that excess monk's cloth on the back side and that finishes off your wall decor piece. This next project is another super old project on my channel, one of the first DIYs that I ever created. And I wanted to create a little leaning ladder that kind of allowed you to display some of your decor or whatever you wanted to place on here. So I went to the hardware store and I got some wood cut down to the sizes featured in that first frame there. And basically I brought this outside and used nails to nail it together. Now, if I was to be recreating this project currently, I would 1000% probably be using either wood glue and some screws or just screws. Um, I don't suggest using nails for this project but that is how I went ahead and did it. I just went ahead and I nailed directly through the shelves on my piece along with the side there. Um, nailed two nails into each section and I just moved my way along placing shelves where I wanted them to go and using two nails to secure them in it to place. Super simple and easy and I styled it like this.
Neon signs are super funky and fun in home decor. However, they can be pretty expensive if you need one custom made. So I wanted to share with you guys how to kind of create your very own makeshift neon sign, which I think would be a great Christmas gift for someone or birthday present or just piece for your own bedroom. So I started off with a large canvas and painted it the backing color that I wanted it to be. I just opted for this kind of corally pink color. And then I went ahead and got these LED strip lights, which are from Amazon. They are just basically string lights that are super malleable. You can use them however you would like to. So I punched a hole in the back side of my canvas and brought the string light out the front and I was able to then go ahead and create the shape that I wanted to. Now, I suggest going ahead and tracing out the design you want to go with first. That way you can go ahead and just use super glue to adhere it down. And I do suggest using super glue. It holds down the LED strip in literally a matter of one second. And once you finish off a desired section like the word hello, you can actually pull your light strip through the back side and then have it come up through a new section if you do want more LED on the front side. So I created a little border on the bottom and I used a little bit of my pink paint just to go in and kind of cover up any of those super glue remnants because they are a little bit glossy. I taped my battery pack on the back side and that finishes off your DIY LED sign. Here I have another fun dollar store project for you guys. So I found these little plant pots at the dollar store. They're basically just like the pots that would essentially be used when plants are first starting out. You kind of grow them in here and transfer them into soil. So I ripped them all apart and I'm going to be boiling them down in some water. This literally looks like beef. If you guys watch the full tutorial of this project, I talk about how it looks identical to roast beef and that is basically what it is. But we are going to be using a mixer here to mix it up in a bowl and break down all of our paper fibers because what we're going to be doing is creating a paper mache bowl using some joint compound and some Elmer's glue. So mixing that into our material to start, which is basically our broken down paper fibers that is all heated up, we're going to want a nice mushy material. Next, you're going to want to go ahead and find some form of mold. So I found this large Ikea bowl. I used some oil on the exterior of it and also added some cling wrap on the outside as well. That way our piece would not stick in the end and it would just nicely come off. So scooping a large dollop of our roast beef material on top, but it's really paper mache. You're going to press this on the exterior, let it dry in a place for four to five days. Now I suggest if you want to create this project, going back and watching the full tutorial, which I'll link it below for you guys. I just went ahead and I painted this with a little bit of cream paint, some black paint. I also added some wood stain to kind of give it a vintage look and that finished off this bowl. Project 99 is another oldie but goodie, you guys. I'm going to share with you how to create a cute little jewelry holder using some cement mix. So starting off, I'm mixing up my cement as I normally would with some water to create the consistency that I want to go for. I am then going to be pouring this about three inches deep into an oatmeal container. You can really use whatever you want for this project, but I found the oatmeal container worked perfectly. And as you can see, the next step is I'm going to be placing in a paper mache cone, which I'm going to press down into my cement mixture. That way, once it fully dries, it's kind of sealed on the inside of the cement and you can pull it away and you're going to have your paper mache cone just stuck down in the middle there. Using a little bit of sandpaper, I went ahead and sanded down at the edges to make sure that they were nice and clean. But this is how I created a really cute like bracelet or ring holder for your bedroom. And our last project is a very fun vase project using this pool noodle that I found at the dollar store along with some of the lightweight spackling from the dollar store as well. I just went ahead and I actually coated the outside of this pool noodle using our lightweight spackling to almost give it a ceramic finish. I really wanted this piece to kind of give off CB2 or Urban Outfitters vase vibes that you would buy for like $150. Now I went through so many processes of spray painting this piece. I started off with black to start and I was honestly not a fan. So then I went in with this stone finish spray paint. I sprayed this on there, gave it a generous coat of the stone finish. And once again, I was not the biggest fan. It kind of just had this odd colorway to it and the black wasn't fully coated. So then I brought it inside and I used some white acrylic paint mixed up with a little bit of tan acrylic paint, mixed that together. And then I fully coated my piece with this paint and I love the way that it turned out. It totally finished it off and made it look like a really funky retro vase. You can pop some florals on the inside and that finishes off your your vase project.